Fuck it. Stack. This is so cool. This is so cool. The, the FI Industries Washington DC. You can see that. Here's a little pro tip. Make sure you get the the pink up Lula. You know why? It never walks away on you. What's up everybody and I'm sorry that we lost you. So we had some technical difficulties, you know, doing live streams on a shoestring budget is that's the way it goes sometimes. We end up we end up uh <laughs> having some technical difficulties. No, it's definitely Comcast's problem and we called Comcast, Brendan said, "Look, we just got a new modem. What the heck?" And uh they said, yeah, there's nothing we can do for you. Your modem's fine, and thanks for calling, click. And hung up on them. And we're like, what the heck? Customer service. Where's the customer service? But while we were gone, you'll notice these little dangly things hanging from my ears. I did not get my ears pierced. I have something extremely exciting. And that is, for those of you who don't want to type, you're not a keyboard commando, you can call us live. We can be like, you're next. It's like dialing for dollars, right, Tim? Right. All right. So um, I didn't even get to the good part of the show, which was, I don't know what it was going to be, but we were going to do something good. Don't forget, I still have these awesome golf divot tools for dad. Oh, there's the number to call in if you want, if you got something to talk about. If you don't, if you just want to be like, Hey, what's up, man? You know, maybe we could do that another time, but I don't care at this point. I'm open for anything. And uh, Mr. Lebowski is asking about the 3030 lever gun for home defense. And it's funny you should say that because I just put on back order because I've never been able to get my hands on one is the, uh, the Marlin Dark Series 3030 lever action for home defense it's awesome it's all blacked out as black like ebonized wood and it has paracord 550 paracord wrapped around the lever so and they're cool they're short 16 and a half inch barrel with the picatinny rail on it and so they're pretty cool I, actually i don't even know if they make that series in a 3030 i know they make it in 44 mag they make it in 357 mag and 4570 but yeah, we have some 3030s in stock, and uh, it wouldn't be a bad way to go. Um, we're putting together some gifts for Dad, so that should be cool. Um, we're going to have a couple different price points on those. They'll be like little mystery ammo cans, and that'll be fun. Yeah, Comcast does suck very small. I'm like, what the heck? And so I'm not even going Instagram right now. Try yeah. Live yeah. Roy is beside himself. Would somebody please call so Roy can just? He's like over there. He's like, who wants to be first? Who wants to be first? He's like, he's like, come on, somebody call. Now, what about the delay? Is that going to be weird? Probably for them. Yeah, it's going to be real weird. For them. Yeah. They're going to have to turn the volume. Down. Yeah. So if you do call, you'll have to turn your volume down. So. Anyway, I need a call screener. Can I call you Bo Snurdly? I am the call screener. You're the call screener? Because I'll get some Karen that'll be like, you guys should be closed. You're not even wearing a mask. 
What is wrong with you? When's the last time you sanitized the I'm counters? As good as, I, as the calls I screen. You're what? You're only as good as the calls you screen. That's Maura Healy. I put it right on. Yeah, Maura Healy online too. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think we're going fiber optic. We're gonna change over to fiber optic. There's that open cape fiber optic, and we're, yeah. And not to mention the speed will greatly increase. And he said in 2019, they were down all of five minutes. I've been down all of five minutes today, probably more than five minutes today only. And for the last two weeks, it's probably hours. So that's a pretty good statistic to say that you've only been down, your service has only been down five minutes in, in an entire year. Uh, sign me up. It is expensive, of course. And it's a lot more than 800 bucks, but, oh boy, go figure. So when, where were you when things Where were was I? I don't even remember. I was, I think I was talking about RDBs or whatever. Yeah, so welcome back, James. Um, I, I honestly can't remember what the heck I was talking about, but I was on a roll. I'm like, yeah, and then this happened, and I look and I'm like frozen on the screen. I go... I think we have an internet problem, <laughs> so that happened. It does happen. We were going to go through a big review of non-traditional carry tonight. We were going to talk about holsters, and we were going to talk about uh, some non-traditional carry options. So there's a couple different things out there, right? Um, the, average, the most traditional carry is with a holster. So if you have a holster, you can wear it on your body and you can be, you know, you get you get to access your gun pretty easily. So if you um, have a like a this is one non-traditional option and this isn't really carry option, although it could be if you like pocket carry. But if you're pocket carrying, I would like find the resident um steward or uh, stitch person in your family or maybe yourself take up a sewing class your good home economics class from high school will kick in and you can stitch this into your pocket and basically the the uh let's see if it'll work on a 365 no it won't it's a little loose but this one goes on an m p but it would click on there and it stays and completely protects your trigger guard. So when you go in the holster, or you go in the pocket, I should say, and you draw the gun, it frees up from the plastic guard. Now, some people make these with a little belt clip on them, which is kind of cool, so you can appendix carry with them. But it does make reholstering a pain in the neck. So you draw the gun, you shoot, and then you got to take this out, you got to put it on, and then you got to put the whole thing back in your in your uh, waistband with the belt clip. This is a little bit different. Maybe if you have some like tactical pants with a hole in the bottom of the pocket or something, or a, you know, maybe you could even loop this around your belt and then put it back into the uh, pocket. That's what this string is for. And then you could put it back in your pocket. No one would really question the string that's there in your around your belt going into your pocket. It probably is just looks like a lanyard. But then when you draw the gun, you're gonna get up to a certain height and you'll break it free from that trigger guard and you know be able to engage the target so you break it free from the trigger guard drive out on target so there's that that's kind of the first option i wanted to talk about it's very minimalist but the the other uses for this is in a purse if you or a bag if you have an off body carry like a bag or a purse you can you can tether this in your purse or tie it to something in your bag so that when you draw the gun, it separates the gun from the trigger guard. That way you're not reaching in your bag and inadvertently hitting the trigger and causing a negligent discharge. So this is a really good um, thing that uh, would work out well. And yes, thank you, Jeff, for mentioning that. I'll show you guys that, especially you guys who have rejoined the broadcast. So. Um, that's one option for off-body or non-traditional carry if you're a pocket carry, or those also would work great in your center console, that work great in a biometric safe, or something like that where you don't wanna reach in and hit the trigger as you're drawing your gun out. You could still protect the trigger of the gun, you could tether it to the back of your safe. Um, so when you reach in and pull out, it pops off and you're ready to go. 
The other one here that this is one of my favorites is uh, the modular belly band by Crossbreed. This is um, Crossbreed holsters. Uh oh, is that a phone call or is that you? All right, he's messing with me and no one wants to talk to me. I don't blame them. They just want to listen. If they don't want to talk, I don't blame them. Uh, so this has got a modular belly band. So the way this works, and I'm going to clear this gun out because I'm talking and we're closed. I'm not worried about the the sniper brigade coming in. And um, so this gun is is clear. Nothing in the chamber. So I got an empty mag here just for posterity. And um, so this is a real nice Kydex and leather holster and it has le uh, Velcro on the back. So it works out really well. It holds the gun in a good position. And then you put um, this belly band on, obviously you do it in the same manner you would do any type of holster that's in, inside the waistband holster. You would do it before you, you know, pull your pants up or whatever. So I'm not going to go the whole distance for you guys. I know some of you might enjoy the show, but most of you would probably switch the browser off pretty quick. And uh, so you stick that on the Velcro in whatever position you're going to carry. Let's see if I can show you a little better. And then you pull this extra Velcro layer over the front of the gun. Now it really presses it tight to the body. It even has an extra mag pouch over here. I might have put it on upside down but um, it has an extra mag pouch built right into the fabric. Um, so I, yeah, it's right here. So I can carry my extra magazine right there. And now you pull your pants up, put them on, zip them up, put your belt on like you regular do, and it's also very stable. So if I'm in this three o'clock position, now I can draw the gun and obviously my pants being around it prevent it from movement. But even with the movement, um, it, it still comes out of the holster. It has good retention, clicks right back in this place, and uh, I can just kind of move this around to the, or I can just actually relocate this part of it to the appendix, which is where I like to carry. Now this is going over two layers of holster. I have my other holster. That was kind of dumb. Maybe I'll take that off to help with a little bit of I'm looking like Jerry Nadler pulling his face mask off. Um, but anyway, there we go. And then you would pull your pants up, belt, or if you just wear yoga pants or something like that. I mean, I'm not going to be <laughs> caught dead in them. But for women in leggings or yoga pants, this is a really good option. Yeah, I could model this with yoga pants. It would probably be pretty equivalent to me demonstrating this when I take, you know, never mind. So anyway, there's the appendix position. Now I can draw and uh, there we go, right back into the holster and good retention. I could actually jog with this if you had to, uh, if you wanted to have something to run around town with, um, that would be a good option. And um, so this is actually one of my favorite. The other thing that's cool about this is they sell these Velcro panels. So now you're, take your holster off at night. I don't have to take my gun out of the holster and it goes right into the biometric safe and you can stick it to some uh, Velcro. So when you reach in and need your gun, you can draw the gun and the holster stays in. Same idea as that trigger guard. The other thing that's cool about it is you could put some Velcro in the inside of your center console or some people like to do it under the dash area but down by your leg space. So you could put it there with, with that good Velcro panel, it'll stick on. You could also uh, put this like next to the bed or the nightstand or whatever your your nighttime stowage of the gun is. And it also would work good inside a purse or an off-body carry or the, uh, the Vertex backpacks have a Velcro panel inside. They can, so you can stick this to a number of different spots in the backpack. Um, it's a really good, uh, it's a really good option. And Jeff's wondering if it'll make you jog better. Absolutely, it'll make you jog better, run faster, jump higher, and leap tall buildings with a single bound. So that's one reason you should get the, uh, the crossbreed modular belly band. But I do think it's a very versatile holster, has great retention. It's not like the traditional belly band where you're just sticking it in fabric 
and one size fits all. This is molded to this 365, and it comes in a bunch of different models. I can order it, whatever. We have a bunch in stock, the bodyguards, the 365s, the shields, the easies. So whatever one you want. A lot of women who don't always wear belts really like the way it feels. They sometimes go in the bathroom, try it on, come back. Yep, sold. You sold me on it. And uh, it's a really good option for uh, non-traditional carry. So that's the crossbreed um, belly, modular belly band. And has a lot of different uh, options with it. One of the other things you could do is Sticky Holster makes this ankle biter, they call it. So sometimes, you know, ankle holsters had a good run for a couple weeks and then, you know, everyone bought them and then they ended up in the in the drawer or in the back of the closet or in the that weird cardboard box that's in everybody's little, like, basement gun product spot. So this is kind of a redesign of the old idea of an ankle carry. So this is your... Uh, calf panel um, it kind of sticks around your calf and then has a tether that goes down to the down to the main part of it and this works in tandem with another sticky holster so you got it this is just the ankle biter part but the sticky holster which is also a pretty decent holster in its own right if you don't mind uh, not having a hard kydex holster of some sort it's a it's just a sticky, soft holster. A lot of people like it for um, for pocket carry. Welcome, thank you, Alex. And so you're, uh, you can actually just reach in your pocket, draw the gun, and the, the holster stays in your pocket. It also works good for inside the waistband. Can they see me here? You got on this camera right now. I am? Okay. So when you push it down inside your pants, it it sticks to your body. So when you draw the gun, the holster stays put. It works surprisingly well. Um, they, they're called sticky holsters. We have two models here, one from Birchwood Casey, which is a honeycomb. I think this one's a little cheaper. These are like 20 bucks. These are 24 bucks, so they're pretty comparable in price. But the Birchwood Casey one has a lot of different sizes, and it has a honeycomb pattern instead of just all-around stickiness. Both are great holsters. But this one works with the ankle biter, and I don't know if they'll be able to see this, but I'll attempt to put it on. So I'm not gonna use the calf strap, but if you uh, wrap this on, wrap it around first around your ankle, and then you put the holster in, with the gun, I would do that together probably, so you get a good stretch. There it goes. So now, there's my ankle holster with the, with the holster and the gun, and you pull up your pant leg, and now I can draw the gun, bang, 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 and to reholster, Safely, you would just take it back off. You wouldn't want to practice reholstering. So it's a pretty nice setup. It's one of the more comfortable ankle carries I've seen. Um, if you're wearing these Metro jeans like I have on, it probably would be a little hard to conceal, but you certainly can. It's not impossible. If you wear the good cowboy pants, you'd probably be fine. But um, yeah, and you know, as far as one of the hardest things to get used to with ankle carry is the weight. This one is very comfortable. Um, we used to sell the elite ones, which had like a Sherpa lamb's wool on the inside, and that was comfortable as well. By the end of the day, you're feeling it, right? And so. I know a lot of people that carry medical kits on their ankle, so maybe you get the ankle medical kit on your right side and you wear the gun on the left side and you want it on the inside of your, uh, your weak side so you can drop to your knee, pull your pant leg up. Obviously, looser pants would be better, but pull your pant leg up out of the way 
and then you can draw the gun and drive out. So this ankle biter carry is a good one for uh, non-traditional carry. A lot of people who wear, uh, you know, pants that don't have the advantage or luxury of wearing a good stiff defensive belt or something like that can, you know, get away with one of these. Or maybe you're in an office setting with clothing that's not conducive to carry. So you buy the ankle biter and then you use it with the holster you already have. If you have one of those sticky or those honeycomb holsters and um, it's a cheap and cheerful way to get a pretty good non-traditional carry, especially when uh, traditional carry is not gonna work out so well for you. So those are the sticky ones. Again, I have that Birchwood Casey um, honeycomb holster, which is a very nice holster. It's a soft holster, great pocket holster, and uh, this will fit a number of different guns. They have a nice chart on the back as to all the different guns they, they fit, and so we have those in stock for like 20 bucks, so grab one of those. Then if you do have that sticky holster um, or that Birchwood Casey holster, um, you can get one of these uh, tr travel mounts. And this is similar to the Velcro that Crossbreed makes. So basically it comes with a Velcro panel that you can stick anywhere you want and then this panel will stick to it. So under your desk at work, in the center console, in the biometric safe, in the uh, backpack or the purse or whatever. And then you just basically take your holster and you push, push it right into this sticky travel mate. And then it even has some retention. So if it's in a purse, it, won't, it jostles around, it's not gonna fall out. And if you have to get at it quick, you just pull that Velcro. And again, the gun comes right out, holster stays put. And, you know, it's, it's a pretty nice little way to do traditional or non-traditional off-body carry. Obviously, this wouldn't do you much good unless you were hiking in the back country and you put it on your kit, you know, maybe some gear or whatever, and you wanted to have it quickly accessible and you're hiking and you have a lot of Velcro surface area, you could put on some of your, you know, gear or whatever, maybe you have some straps or molly attachments that you could thread in a good amount of Velcro on and you could stick that to it now in the back country or whatever, it's right there for you. So you can have quick access to the gun. So that's a good way to go as well. Uh, and that rounds out those four different options. So we went over the ankle biter, we went over the travel kit, you know, this travel um, mount, the sticky holster, the honey, birchwood honeycomb holster, the trigger guard, and the modular belly band. So a okay, bunch of good options there if you uh, are looking for some other things that, um, you know, other options on how to carry your gun off body and whatnot. So that's the way that goes. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you can call in now and we can answer... Uh, no, no one's called in, David. You could be the first if you want. Uh, we're we're not going to be on much longer, so uh, you must have broken the line when you walked out. Those darn metal, metal AR mags sell out fast. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, uh, sorry about that, but uh, we'll we'll get some more. We have those twenties though, but I'll get some more for you. So uh, let's see. What am I looking for? Um, James is saying Comca Comcast makes spect Spectrum seem like angels. Um, are you able to build an AR-15 or a pistol in mass? Kevin, if you're still watching, the answer is yes. As long as, all right, um, as long as you do a fixed mag AR or a fixed mag pistol, then you can. Um, so let's see here. Come on, work with me. All right. James has a sticky holster for his pocket carry 911. Actually used it today for a jean pocket to eat at a restaurant. No drinking, but you can conceal carry and you didn't want to print like your Glock. Yeah, that's what it's designed for. And we are almost back to hockey. I know, I did almost pull something. I pulled something on 
uh, Saturday in my two-day class. But, yeah, so it's a, that's just a couple ideas for you guys that, you know, are ha some people are have a hard time finding a holster, and uh, that gives you some options that aren't as traditional as others. So I'm going to share with you guys. We've got a small crowd tonight, and uh, these are going to sell out like yesterday. So this is the Hudson. I'm doing an unveiling. The Hudson Blitz. And I wanted to show you guys yesterday, but I knew it was probably not a good idea. We had a lot of people on yesterday, and I only got two of these bad Larrys. But maybe if you want something cool for Dad, and uh, Tran, your wife's not buying you anything, so maybe you could get one of these. So the Hudson Blitz, you got to YouTube this. Maybe I'll have Roy throw the video up. But the thing that is just insane about this gun is it's a 16 round pre-charged pneumatic 30 caliber and here's the best part machine gun so yeah it's ridiculous and the the guy um on the youtube video runs a plate rack he literally goes and just runs the whole plate rack so it is pretty badass no doubt about it and um it's a uh, 30 cal sold 30 caliber um, has some cool like sling attachments very very rugged well made has uh, has the um, what do you call it uh, uh, adjustable cheek piece it has the adjustable length of pull a little bit it's got some shims in there and whatnot and it's got the carbon fiber wrap tank on it like you'd see on a high-end uh, paintball gun or airsoft gun or whatnot. So you can get this filled with a scuba tank or a fill station or a hand pump or a compressor like we sell. And this thing is sick. 30 caliber pre-charged pneumatic machine gun. 16 round it is sick it is truly sickening i love every every foul inch of this thing so you can also take this carry handle off and it's got some picatinny rails so yeah it's pretty ba um so hopefully get them while you still can uh it's a fully suppressed barrel too so it's pretty quiet. Chris, so remind me, Chris, remind me that you talked to me. Also. Kevin is saying, great, you'll be visiting our parts pretty soon. And uh, that'd be awesome. And Conan's eyes are lighting up. And Tay Cad is saying, holy crap. And then Will Rosa, all he has to say about this is, any new PC9s available? He's completely uninterested in the, in the absolute product bomb that I just dropped on you guys. That's all right. Um, yeah, we do actually have some PC9s. I think they just hit the dock. So, uh, Jimmy, how much is it? I don't know. I don't have a flipping cr clue. It's not going to be cheap. I think it's $899 or maybe even close to 1000 bucks. but we'll find out. And uh, phone ringing up the, the phone's ringing up the hook. People calling in the regular number because the number's on the screen if they want to talk to you. No, I don't know. If you want to call in... It's 774-470-6939. Let me see if there's a price on this thing. Ah! All right. And I'm not trying to brag or anything or pat myself on the back, but the segment of the Howie Car Show that I was on last week was the most downloaded segment oh, of yeah. the week. So... We got one? Toby. All right. So this is 999.99. Are we on? Hey, who's this? Got the call screen to go. Can you hear me? Oh boy. Technical difficulties. Oh yeah, cool. Hey, what's, what's your name? All right. So the uh, Hudson Blitz PCP air rifle is pretty sweet. Yeah, let's talk to Steve. Right, hang on. 
All right, we're gonna yeah. see how this goes. See this is gonna be awesome. The first time here. Here with us, people. <laughs> this is so rinky dink. It's not even funny. But all right. Any discount for that open box one? All right, you should go talk to each other at this point. Steve, Steve okay. are you there? Can you hear me? Joby, can you hear me? I can hear you. How's okay, it going? So I, can, I can't hear you very well, but I'll pose no? a question. All right, I'll give him a little, I'll give him is a that little better? Ahead. Any better? Yeah, that's a little better. So I was in, I was in earlier speaking to Rory. I don't think you guys have covered this yet. I'm but, not um, out, I? Beg your pardon? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, we're listening. Yeah, so so I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm a lot confused about what, what guns I can buy uh, out of state and bring in to the state and how we can do that. That, that, okay. that may be that may be not on the compliance list. Speaking with you know, speaking about pistols, let's say Dan Wesson, right? Or uh, sure. or C Z or any any of the guns that I've been looking at that um, I don't see in the compliance list. If they're used, can they ultimately be transferred to me through a private owner or through you guys? Um I just, I'm not clear on that, and I've gotten a few different answers from different people, so can you help clarify that? Sure, absolutely. Um, no, it's a great question, and uh, the answer is, there's no law that says you can't own whatever gun you want, as long as it doesn't violate the assault weapons ban. So, like, mm -hmm. we get the, uh, you know, we get asked all the time, can, can I bring an AR pistol to Massachusetts if I owned it in Arizona? The answer is no, because it would violate the assault weapons ban. But if you have a Dan Wesson and you move from Arizona, that doesn't violate the assault weapons ban. Can't hear so you. you. Can't hear you. Uh, shoot, he can't hear me. Um, yeah, I, I heard. I heard you up to that. If you okay. Have, if, as long as it doesn't violate um, the, assault the assault weapons ban. Weapons um, rules, but if you have a Dan Wesson, go ahead. Yeah. So if you have a Dan Wesson or something, or another gun, or a Taurus, or whatever gun that is not legal for me as a dealer to sell in Massachusetts, you could legally bring it with you. Now that presents a little bit of a problem if you want to acquire one, how do you get one? Because you can't go that's, across state lines and buy a handgun. Right. So, so the, basically the, the short answer is the only way you could acquire a gun that is not on the mass roster is through a private transfer. So if you know someone who has a gun that's not on the mass approved weapons list, there's no law that says you can't buy it from him. So you go do a face-to-face -face transfer. I can't facilitate the sale, unfortunately, but I can, you know, do a, uh, you know, you could come do it at my shop if you want to meet him in a place where it's a public spot and you're, you know, you're not sure about them, and we could help guide you through the process. But we it, can't. It has to be a face-to-face -face transfer. Yeah, it has to be a face-to-face -face transfer. So um, if you know, Joe wants to sell you, Steve, a Dan Wesson 44. It's not a mass compliant gun, so you'd have to do a private transfer. What you do is you Google EFA 10. So that'll bring you to the Massachusetts uh, portal. It's the transfer portal. And then you go on there and you each put your information in and it confirms that they're both valid licenses and it says that the, um, the transaction may proceed. Then you put the gun information in then you hit submit, you print a copy for him, you print a copy for you, and you go on your merry way. That's right. really what if he's not a mass what if he's not a mass license holder and he's he's in, in the guns coming from another state? Yeah, then you're stuck. You're not able to buy that gun because he would have to transfer that gun to a an FFL dealer and then the FFL dealer can't do the transfer to you. So that's the problem with it. Oh, you um, can't do the transfer, but can no. you buy it if it's a used gun? I can buy whatever gun I want. I can get all kinds of non-compliant guns. The problem is right. I can't sell them to people. I can't even oh, you sell can't. them. You know, no, you can't. So that's the problem. The, the state was very smart, and they made the enforcement side of things on the dealer level. They said, oh, yeah, if you have one of those guns, sure, you can bring it back with you. You can, you know, you can own it. You can sell it to people privately, but dealers cannot sell them unless they meet the approved weapons roster. So unless it was owned in Massachusetts prior to 98 and right. there's, you know, then then I can sell it like that whole big collection I'm selling. We were doing right. an online auction. Those guns, none of those are on the roster, but they were all owned prior to 98 in Massachusetts. So therefore, uh, they're 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 uh, 
they're pre ban if you will. So, okay, okay. So I have to find one from a private owner in Massachusetts. That's okay. Correct. Whatever gun it yep. is, right? Yep. Doesn't matter. Does, it, doesn't matter it, if it's post ninety eight, pre ninety eight, right? Right. Doesn't matter at all. Like even if someone, yeah. like someone has a Glock, Gen four Glock, or a, you know, whatever it is, uh, they want to sell it to you. No problem. They can do that legally as long as the, it doesn't violate the high the magazine capacity. But you Got can it. legally own whatever gun you want in Massachusetts. It's just right. how the heck do you get it? You know, that's the problem. It, it, so. Okay, so it can't be a gun broker, right? Mm. -mm. Now it can't well, be an auction. It can't come out of from out of state. No, no, but what if it's an auction in Massachusetts? Yeah, that's no problem. If it Again, if it was owned prior to 98 and some guy on GunBroker, sometimes they will actually say it's a Massachusetts gun on GunBroker yep. or arms list for that reason, so that they people know that, oh, cool, I can buy this gun because it's a Browning High Power. Or it's something that I can't get out of uh, in, in the okay. state, but it's already okay. here and p someone wants to sell it. So. As long as it's okay. a mass, yeah, I can take a gun from another mass gun dealer that was owned prior to 98 in this state and sell it, even if it's okay, not on the list. Okay, but for you to sell it, for you to sell it to me, it has to be pre-98. Correct, yep. For me for me to buy it from a private owner, it, it doesn't matter whether it's pre-98. Exactly, yep. Okay, so it that's can be very anything. clear. Yeah. Yep. That's clear as mud, clear. right? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's some, clear yeah. Clear once I clear it up, but I agree it's the most confusing set of laws on on earth and the people who make these laws don't understand the laws that they're creating they just think they're I doing understand. good you know all right man yeah. well thanks for the question that was a great question and i'm sure uh i've cleared some things up for some people and confused thanks, them thanks out. toby Hello. i was into that and, and for all your listeners you got some really great guns from that from that private owner some really beauties some real sure beauties. Did. Yeah. yeah thank you we thank sure you very much all right man have a good one thank, thanks you too bye -bye. take care bye-bye all right Success worked, right? Cool. That was a good test of the emergency broadcast system. And uh, I got the answer he was looking yeah, we got the answer because that is tough to sit there and like thumb through your phone to get that kind of an answer. So uh, let's see. Uh, any new PC9? Oh, we already talked about that. How much is it? Thousand bucks, and you need to see it shot first. All right, so find the YouTube video of the Hudson Blitz and put it up real find quick, the link. Find the what? The Hudson Blitz YouTube video. And you guys are going to be blown away. We'll have to do it. We'll do one um, if I can get more of those. I ordered eight more. So David D. has a special request to bring back the auctions. I, brought, I have them up and live right now. I we do? I have to try to put some more stuff All right, up. so... Roy's going to work all night getting a few more things up there for you, David. Um, so, yeah. What if a person has an LTC in Mass but lives outside of Mass? So that would be a non-resident LTC. Or if you're lucky enough to have a resident LTC because you own property here but you live in another state, then you can actually purchase guns in Massachusetts. If you live outside of Mass and you have a resident license to carry, you can absolutely bring your non compliant guns to Massachusetts as long as they don't violate the assault weapons ban so um, that's a that's good can't find them on the website is there a special address or link do we have any listings right now on the au auctions uh, yeah there's listings up on the auction right, of the auction right now. David can't find them we like to hide things that we're trying to sell no, like we constantly online. hide guns out in the back room there's that shop we're so online, items. shop online then auction items so you got a mouse over shop online. Don't click on it, but then so, auction items underneath it. Yep. Can they sell to a person in mass? Not if they're from out of state. You cannot sell across state lines. Um, you could, if they have a resident license to carry because they own property here and all that, then that might work. So that could work. So Matt's on arms list every day. Maybe we should start taking advantage of arms list. I don't sell on arms list. It's been a little too cumbersome for me not quite as bad as northeast shooters which i have sold on um which has is very cumbersome for me to upload and list items on so i just gave up but um sometimes i do uh brian has a question is the 14 inch barrel legal in mass and the answer is no the 14 inch shockwave uh the answer is absolutely not 
any gun that has a barrel less than, or any shotgun that has a barrel length of less than 18 and a half inches or 18 inches is considered a firearm. If it's a firearm, it's subject to the assault, not the assault weapons, it's subject to the mass approved weapons roster. This is where it gets really confusing. So even though it's a shotgun, it must be on the mass approved weapons roster if it has a barrel less than 18 inches. This is the gray area for short barreled shotguns and short barreled rifles. So it's tough to get them because of that thing. And there's, you know, the state actually got wise to it and they actually changed it. So if you click shotgun, the shortest barrel length you can enter is 18 inches. If you try to put in 14, it won't even let you. You have to, yeah, and they don't have a, a box for firearm. You got rifle, pistol, or shotgun on the mass instant check system, the Mercs. Um, so anyway, Brian wants to know if there's any discount for the open box model that I just opened in front of everybody. So yeah, so what was in the FedEx truck yesterday was some Ruger PC carbines, some uh, SIG 365s. We got um, a bunch of like little oddball gear that we needed. Um, we got a bunch of ammo. We got some gun safes. We got some nothing like truly earth shatteringly exciting, but it, every time FedEx shows up, I get excited. So um, that's what was there. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, there's another gun reviewer. That's all right. There's like a three minute one where he runs a plate rack yeah. and then he talks about it. That's a good one. Yeah, throw it up there. I'm not that like, I'm not that narcissistic. I can't promote some other guy's YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that cleared up a few things. We are going to do an extensive video on mass law one of these days. I keep threatening to do it, but my wife has been calling me nonstop because she wants to go run the dog before dark. So I'm sorry to cut it short again, but <laughs> happy wife, happy life. You know what I mean? So we're going to have to do that. Uh, what would be the best suggestion for home defense shotgun? I'd get me one of these here. Remington 1187 semi-automatic 12 gauge with the ghost ring former security plant guns for the pilgrim nuclear uh, security um, so yeah this is uh owned by entergy the company that was in charge of uh keeping the security of our nation's interests entergy over at pilgrim nuclear security and these used to be in the service of um, that that plant. So I got a few of these left, and they're $4.99. They're nice patina on them that shows they were used and loved and awesome and have been test fired and gone through by our gunsmith. So we'll guarantee they operate at least once. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. All metal trigger guards. So these are the police model, the 1187 police. They're really nice. These will run forever. We got spare parts if you need them, but you shouldn't. So I got a few of those. Uh, that'd be a good home defense shotgun. That or a Remington 870 or a Mossberg 500 or a Caltech KSG or a KS7. Those are all pretty good. All right. So Conan saying his reference to the depleted uranium round is from the Jackal with Bruce, Bruce Willis. I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah, those evil short barrels. What do you got for me? Wife. My wife? Line one. My wife, line one? I put her on hold, dude. That's not good. Yeah, well, you know what? Just tell her I'm wrapping up, please. I'm put it on speakerphone. Like you no, know. don't put it on speakerphone. No, her. don't put it on well, speakerphone. She doesn't know that she doesn't yeah, thank God she doesn't know the <laughs> dial-in number. All right, I know I got to go. I know I got to go. Um, David, the 1187 is 499 um, you found two bottles of ginger lime mule on my shelf. Not a fan. I'll take them, Chris. Bring them by. We will. I'll take them. I'll trade you for some cranberry limes or something. But uh, the Hudson Blitz video is up. Tell her to call the other number, David. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, all right. So the video is up. 
check it out. Uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna wrap it up right now. I can hear her on the other line. It's not gonna be a good scene for me. So wish me well, guys. Wish me luck. All right. So wish me luck. I'm going in. I'm going in. Um, Justine, have a good night. All right. God bless you guys and have a great night. Thanks so much for watching. Sorry it was so messy. And thanks for the one caller we did get. That was awesome. Appreciate you guys. Have a great night. Double stack. This is so cool. This is so cool though. The FI Industries Washington DC. See if you can see that. Here's a little pro tip. Make sure you get the, the pink up Lula. You know why? It never walks away on you.